and thanks for joining us on another edition of the program National Talk. We are coming with a difference because uh, the coronavirus is still very much around with us and we want to respect the protocols that have been put in place by government. And uh, we do hope that uh, you will accommodate us tonight. Uh, we have our faces a little bit covered. My name is Donald Weze and I have Joyce Jakada in the house. Joyce? It's always a pleasure and even though we look different, it's all to the glory of God because it's up to us to take responsibility for our health and that of our loved ones. Yes, on National Talk tonight, uh, we shall be discussing topical issues that uh, border on the Nigerian nation and it is uh, uh, politics and uh, the state of politics in Nigeria today and towards 2023. And uh, I guess there isn't anybody more qualified to discuss this issue than the gentleman who is with us in the studios tonight. Uh, he is uh, Dr. Patrick Darkum. He is uh, the CEO of the Institute of Human Virology, Nigeria. Now, for those of you who have been on the plateau for quite a while, you will know Dr. Patrick Darkum is not a stranger to the, to, to the media world, and uh, he has been a friend of the media, to be precise. He has been a commissioner in Plateau State, the Commissioner of Health, and also the Commissioner of Information. Dr. Patrick Darkum, you're welcome to the studios. Thank you very much, um, Donald. And um, I must say, long time no see. <laughs> but yes. I guess when we are out, we will uh, take this off so that I'm sure that you are the one. Yes, I am. <laughs> and um, also nice to meet you, Joyce. Thank you. And uh, it's a pleasure to have me here on Equa TV. This is my first time around. So if I make a mistake, you shouldn't blame. No, uh, we, we, <laughs> we say around here, if we make a mistake, nobody will die because it's not a, it's, a, it's a, okay. a, a human a brain surgery, so to That's speak. That's right. Yes, uh, we are talking the state of politics in Nigeria today and uh, towards 2023, looking at events that have unfolded over, the, 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 over time, uh, insecurity, crime, corruption, uh, name it. It's all over the place. What's happening? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Donald. And um, I think um, one of the key pillars of good governance is security. Mm. I believe that um, if you are talking about good governance, you are talking about security. In Nigeria, we have a situation where um, well, just to describe the current situation, is uh, is pathetic. Mm. The current situation is, uh, is 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 we shouldn't have been where we are now. We shouldn't have been. We shouldn't be where we are now. Mm. And um, I think it is clear to everybody that we are in a very difficult state. Mm. Look at the kind of insecurity we have, ranging from uh, Boko Haram. Mm that uh you know we thought was limited to the northeast but definitely it is not mm -hmm. and um look at the also the the hard men mm -hmm. that have become bandits and uh, that have turned into you know just just high level crime mm -hmm. then look at the issue that relates to kidnapping mm -hmm. so burglary proof seems to become a norm is it doesn't seem to be a crime anymore mm -hmm. That's the level to which we have gotten in terms of uh, insecurity. Mm. And I think um, the reasons are multifaceted. We can blame, uh, you know, governance to some extent because mm. there are certain things that those that have been placed in authority should be doing that we think they could do better. Mm -hmm. And um, But I also think that um, security is a community affair. Mm. Security is an affair that... It, it is the responsibility of each and every one of us. Mm. Somebody said, you are as secure as you think you are. Mm -hmm. And you are as secure as you try to make your environment to be. Mm. Now, having said that, let us look at the big picture mm. of what you can do or what communities can do. Mm -hmm. We have security apparatus that is now vested in, a cast in, in, in the federal system. Yes. We have at the state level, you have security that is set to be in charge by the governors. Yes. Then we have security at the local government level. Mm. 
and you expect that the local government chairman should be held accountable to some extent. Now look at the apparatus for which enforcement can be done. Remember security, both prevention and also and enforcement. Enforcement, yes. Okay? You do peace and uh, security by dialogue, by whatever, communities live in peace. Mm -hmm. But you also try to deal with crime mm -hmm. when there are people that have breached the law mm -hmm. and then security has to be enforced. Now, the Nigerian army, the police, the security and civil defense mm -hmm. are all controlled at the federal level. Mm -hmm. It makes it extremely difficult for you to now, you know, hold accountable people at the lower level for security. So I think the structure okay. and the framework of security mm. in Nigeria provides for lapses that, you know, you, you, you get, it, uh, you get um, bandits and uh, people with criminal mind cashing in on it because they know that before the police will come in big force, they need to get permission yes. from the inspector general. The army cannot come in without an order for the, from the chief of army staff. Mm -hmm. And it goes on and on. Okay, I want us to actually bring it down now to the health sector. You are a medical doctor and also a specialist in public health. Also the CEO of the Institute of Human Virology in Nigeria. Now, in, we, we all know that the world is faced with a uh, global pandemic, which is COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And every day we wake up, we have more cases, not like um, less cases or the disease um, coming to an end. Now, where do you think we are getting it wrong in the fight against COVID-19? Um, first of all, I think um, in terms of the fight for COVID, remember that um, there, there is mitigation prevention mm -hmm. when the, it all started mitigation processes were stop everybody coming from the from out of the country mm -hmm. because uh, coronavirus remember is caused by a virus we call it SARS-CoV-2 mm -hmm. and um, started off somewhere in Wuhan China mm -hmm. sometime in December was declared a pandemic uh, late February early March by the WHO mm -hmm. and by February 27th we just had one case count down the line. Six months later, uh, Nigeria, we are, we, are. we are in 40-something thousand now. How many months ago, Plateau had zero case, mm. but now we are beginning to push towards the 1,000 mark. Mm. Now, from my own perspective, mm. we instituted these measures correct. Mm. Two things that I think that we could have done and done better. Number one is the rapidity of the scale up for testing is not as much as we should have. Mm -hmm. Granted, there was no lab, but now we have over 60 labs that can test, but we could have done better. Other countries that are resource limited have done better. So if we had done that, we would have defined mm -hmm. the burden of disease early. Mm -hmm. Then number two is I think we were struggling between life and livelihood mm -hmm. in terms of the lockdown that was supposed to prevent people from coming together and spreading the disease because you can't get it from nowhere. From nowhere yes. the, the virus doesn't have legs. Mm. It uses human beings to move from point A to point B. Mm. So we had a lockdown. For me, we would have gone the China way early. And how did China do? You know, the, 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 the Wuhan city was on lockdown nonstop for 13 weeks. Mm. Okay? Okay, the problem in Nigeria is how do you keep people at home 13 weeks, what will they eat, etc. So we could have done like half of that. Mm -hmm. Gone non-stop eight weeks. Mm. That way we break the chain and make it extremely difficult for this virus to find human beings that it will ride on to go from point A to B. So I think in terms of the rapidity of the scale-up of our testing, we could have done better. In terms of uh, the measures to contain the virus, mitigate it in terms of lockdown, and I, you know, it, 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 we could also have done better. I know very okay. well that's okay. your institute. Sorry. Wait, wait, uh, uh, doctor, <laughs> I, I, I am interested in what you're saying because uh, here we are, uh, the, the COVID is there. Ordinary Nigerians did not travel out. We are all here at home. It is, it is the top government officials that travel all over the place. I don't know why they travel, but they do. And then they come back. They brought this thing in. The common Nigerian 
was given instructions, stay at home. We obeyed. We stayed at home. Except for those of us who are on essential uh, services. These gentlemen, these leaders, kept junketing, flying all over the place. And why I am making this comment is based on some of the recklessness that we are seeing. That top government functionaries will even refuse to be checked when they flee or fly in from, from foreign nations. Just recently, something like that happened in one of the airports. That somebody says, don't you know who I am? I'm a chief executive, so I am not going to be checked. Is it not the recklessness of some of our leaders that has caused us to be at this point? Uh, uh, let's tie it up to what the Secretary to the Government of the Federation said, that he didn't know that the health system of Nigeria was this bad. Your take? So let me answer this way. Let me start with a little story. Mm. And the story goes this way. Once upon a time, there was a king that wanted to give his daughter out for marriage. Mm -hmm. And he gave a test. Any man that will marry this pretty daughter mm -hmm. has got to be somebody who is very brave. He got a big pool of uh, pond of water filled with crocodiles. Mm -hmm. Okay? Did not feed this crocodile for days. Mm -hmm. And said, whoever will marry my daughter must swim from point A to B through these crocodiles and come out there. You come out alive, you marry my daughter. My daughter, yes. Out of the blues, this guy was in the water. Before you could say Jack Robinson, this guy was already was out at the other end there. <laughs> and he came out, and you can see the exhaustion, the shock in his face, etc. And everybody came to him and how did you get out? How did you, how did you do it? He said, gentlemen, the question is not how did I do it. The question is who pushed me? <laughs> so apparently this guy had no plans of entering this water. He was just standing by. And, someone and somebody him. just pushed him in. Mm. And he fell in, but he had to get out. Yeah. Why am I giving this story? Let us leave the rhetoric of how the it virus came. came in. Mm. We are in the water. So now, community transmission has been established. Mm. By community transmission, meaning that there are more people that get the virus that don't know where it came from. Mm. It means it came from surfaces, it came from maybe yeah, yeah, yes. marketplace, it came from a gathering, it came from innocent. Because remember that a high percentage of people that have COVID-19 do not exhibit any symptoms. Mm. But when they stay close to you and they are speaking, they are exuding the virus. Mm -hmm. And you are staying close to them, and so you inhale. Yeah, inhaling, yeah. And you know, the natural thing is that when we are close, as long as you are asymptomatic, you don't have any complaint, we relax. Mm -hmm. And we, 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 in fact, bring down our mask. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that this is supposed to be on to protect. She's protecting me, I'm protecting her. Mm -hmm. You are protecting me, I'm protecting you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Now, the reality of what is happening is the fact that... Um, when we now come close to each other, when I want to speak, then I bring it down. Mm. Mm. Then there was no point wearing it. Mm. Okay? Mm. So, to answer the other question on this one is that, yes, initially, this virus came, this traveler came from Italy. Mm. The one through Lagos. The one that came through Abuja, they all came either from the U.S. or from, from the, um, Britain. Yes. And the current virus that is circulating, we have uh, the, 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 the labs in Nigeria have already done what we call sequencing. Mm -hmm. And they have done what is called a phylogenetic tree, meaning that we can tell where this virus is coming from. Is it related and looks similar in terms of its molecular nature mm -hmm. with the ones that are in other countries? And this, the viruses that are circulating now, the strains are from Italy. There are strains from the U.S., strains from Britain, strains from China that have now come in mm -hmm. and they have gone in. The other issue is that remember that while, quote and unquote, some big people brought this thing, airport, etc., but quite a lot of people who were poor people also brought it in through the land borders. Mm. Mm. So it is not absolutely... Uh, the the only route was through people that came in by air, mm. through road also. Remember that uh, the, some of the cases that sprung up in uh, Ogun, I think, mm. also all came from the border. Mm. People that are trekking and going, the villages are porous and uh, the, the 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 borders are porous, and that's how it came about. So I think that first of all, 
Now we have passed the stage of how it came in. We're in the stage of how do we ensure that we break the chain of this virus. All right, doctor, mm -hmm. I, 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 would love, I, I would love that. You have been in government. So you know the, the inner workings of what happens at state executive councils. Now, the responsibility is now being sent back to the states. I know that the National Center for Disease uh, Control is still there. They still come up. The presidential task force will also always come up and give us updates mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of developments as they are unfolding. But uh, I want us not to dwell too much on uh, the COVID itself, but the politics that goes on within states' uh, executive councils. Uh, we, we are talking health situation. We know it's bad. Government is doing something. There is insecurity. It is still there. There is crime. There is corruption. It's, uh, this one is even uh, like an everyday thing. Now you wake up in the morning, you hear somebody did something somewhere. What, what is wrong in the system? such that we are hearing a lot of malfeasance is going on in our in our state governments or even in federal mdas and and what have you what 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 is it what are we getting wrong such that nigerians are we're just watching we don't nobody even knows what is happening because it's like uh, two big men now are exchanging blows in the market square uh, who will go and separate them? So let's watch and see what would happen. That's the stage where the Nigerian nation has become uh, has gone to now. Please let's let's start from your wealth of experience. What do you really think is going on such that we are not getting it? And I also want would like you to tie it up to what um, Maman Dara, who is the nephew of the president, said saying that Nigeria should look at and consider competence rather than zoning looking forward at twenty twenty three. Well, uh, thank you very much, um, Donald, and of course, uh, Joyce, uh, the addition. Mm. First of all, I think the chief executive of a state is a chief executive that is responsible for everything. Mm. You have security, you have education, you have health, you have all kinds of need. Mm. I always say the need is like this. The resources is like this. Mm -hmm. So probably the competence that is required is in identifying what the priority is based on a strategic plan that the state has. Mm -hmm. Meaning that every state must have a strategic plan that is costed and costed in the context of having the resources and then calibrating the priorities mm -hmm. as according to the resources that you have mm -hmm. so that you maintain a balance. And if you ask me what should be the priority, the, number one, we've got to be alive. Mm -hmm. Number two, we've got to eat mm -hmm. and stay healthy. And then number three is that we've got to improve on our knowledge. Mm. Every country measures development by what we call HDI, Human Development Index. Mm. And it is measured on three tripods. It's a tripod. One leg is purchasing power. And purchasing power means to what extent can Joyce go to the market and buy the things and purchase the things that will enable her to survive. Mm -hmm. To what extent can you pay your rent? To what? So what is the purchasing power? That's the socioeconomic. Mm -hmm. The other leg is longevity. To what extent can we live this life in this community mm -hmm. and stay for as long as God wants us to be? Mm -hmm. For the years that God has earmarked for us, to what extent can we stay? So what's our health status? Mm -hmm. And then the third leg is knowledge. How many people in this community have finished secondary school? Minimum. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the village, you count. Among the people here, how many people have finished secondary school? It will tell you the level of knowledge and it will determine the development that will take place there. Yes. So, for you to be a competent leader as they want it, mm -hmm. you must be able to understand all of that. It means that you must know where you want to take this community to. The second is that once you know, mm -hmm. you must be able to show people the way to go. Because it's not a, it's not a, a one-man uh, thing. Yes. You have a team working with you. Mm. Will you have the capacity to be able to galvanize them? You know, I did a little study on Ecclesiastes. Yeah. And um, it says that better a young man who is wise than a foolish king mm -hmm. who does not take advice. Mm. 
meaning that I must be able to show and manage these human resources. And when we talk about it, we are not talking about public sector human resource only. No. We are talking about resource that is available, say, in the Equa TV. Mm -hmm. We want to get Nigerians to change attitude on COVID-19 and make them wear their face mask. Mm -hmm. If you depend only on government outlets, you will not get it right. So, you need so to I must be able to now say that Equa TV, you have the kind of people that want to watch Equa TV. If we put a message here, would we now not reach those people? Mm -hmm. If suddenly they see Equa TV promoting a particular thing, they know that this is a faith-driven thing and people are interested in it and they may even obey it more than when they hear it from PR TV. Mm. Okay? So two things. You know what it is. Mm. You have a strategic thing. You show people how to do it and galvanize them. But lastly, you mm. must also go the way. Mm. So a competent leader that we require knows the way, shows the way, but goes the way. Meaning that, can you imagine that I went to the facility of the Institute of Human Virology at the Plateau State Specialist Hospital today just to look at um, how ready the facility is for COVID testing. Because mm -hmm. the governor has already indicated that, yeah, this is, he's been doing quite a lot of leg walking. Mm -hmm. He has called me a number of times and we have discussed how do we expand testing in Plateau. And we got to the point where we had one, then two, then three now. And one of the three is the one that my institute is providing technical support for. Mm. Can you imagine if I had gone there and I never wore any mask? Mm. I am telling you that tomorrow half of my staff will not wear face mask. So the competence we require in this is a competence that will galvanize all of this. Now, mm. let me now move on to answer the other question that you have said. Yes. The software for galvanizing this is the fear of God. Mm. The genuine fear of God. I am not talking about lip service religion. No. Religiosity is different from spirituality. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is the extent to which you listen to God, you walk with God, you hear Him and you obey Him. Yeah. Religiosity is coming to church, going to a mosque. And that's it. That's religion. But as far as the ethics and values of that religion is concerned, you really don't connect with it. Yeah. It is me, myself, and I. Yeah. A true, a person that really has the fear of God will be in a position to deal with the monster called self. What in the world are people doing with billions? How can one person, mm -hmm. you hear that this one person has amassed billions. And in dollars, not Naira. In, in dollars, not Naira. Mm. How do you explain that? What are you going to do with it? You know, you can't sleep in two houses at the same time. You can't eat more than a plate of food at a time etc. Mm. So it means then that there is something in him that he has not dealt with, that self. And the only one that can help him do that is God himself. Mm. If you think that the laws of Nigeria and doing this in will, that's just by the way. Mm. But having said that, there is also this, uh, the, 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 what God has already allowed, the institution of the justice system, mm. because God is just. Mm. And that justice system must be made to work. If you chop, they should catch you and they, they should punish you. Mm. If people see that happening, it has some level of mitigation, but it doesn't stop it. Because remember that even in the field, they, they used to fire, do firing squad for armed robbers. Mm -hmm. But do you know that they still telephones? I mean, they still uh, people's uh, wallets. Yes, At yes. that time, there were no cell phones. Eh? Mm. They still wallets, even in the place where they do where firing, squad. The firing squad. Yes. So something more powerful than the law and than human is required. Mm. That is why, you know, since uh, we're in Equa TV, <laughs> I always say, the faith-based groups have a lot of role in ensuring that leaders are discipled. Mm. Because we are asking them to do what adults should do. Mm. If you have, um, um, you, you don't have a child, you marriage, you, uh, me and Donna will pray that God will, <laughs> God will bless you, uh, will bless you <laughs> with a very, very nice husband and uh, many good children. You, you know, when, when, when these children are growing, you want to say something and they will follow. Mm. You know, you, you want to now show them mm. that this is how life should be. Mm. Now, if you are unable to do that, 
then your, 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 your ability to be a mother is questioned. So we must be able to now differentiate between baby, let's talk from a Christian perspective, yes. baby, baby Christians, Christians and adult Christians. Mm. Children will always say, give me, give me, give me, give me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Even your own thing, you give it to the child and say, Abe, give me back. What does I he do? Want... No! It's mine. Now. Okay? It's mine. So, baby Christians behave like that even if they become leaders. Mm. So, they want to give me, give me, give me, give me. Me, myself, I, they accumulate. Mm. But if they are properly discipled mm. and they now realize that it is about others mm. rather than about myself, mm. then it may reduce it. It may yes. not completely obliterate it, mm. but it will definitely reduce it. You made okay. mention of a point that um, a lot of individuals which we have seen have kept billions of money to themselves, which is the result of the insecurity we have today, poverty, unemployment, amongst others. Now, talking about taking responsibility, I know these leaders are elected by the citizens. Now, what is the way forward? What's your comments to the citizen now in terms of electing leaders that will look beyond personal interest but service to the people? First of all, I think um, the electorate need to look at the antecedents mm. of individuals, mm. you know. Um, there's a house saying that um, we juma ameto aranan laraba akegani. If I say that I, I'm going to be a good leader, a very good Friday is normally predicted on a Wednesday. When you see Wednesday looking nice, you know Friday will be nice, mm. okay? It means then that if Donald is going to be governor of this state. No? That, that's a prophecy. <laughs> I <told> you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the question that we should happen is that people should begin to find out how did he treat Joyce? Mm. How did he treat the others? Mm. What did he do with the little that he has? If you are unable to help with small, you will not help with big. Yes. So we should look at antecedents. Mm. We should look at the commitment of the person in, for me as Patrick Dacum, commitment in three areas. Mm. Commitment to my faith, commitment to my family, commitment to my friends. Mm. Okay? Am I committed? Can they testify about me? Mm. Can you go to my house and say that this Patrick uh, Dacum wants to be so, so, so a, a governor? Mm. Do you think that he has the integrity to be able to do it? Mm. You, there's a way to find out and then you'll get the truth. It is not possible for the entire electorate to go and start investigating somebody, but mm. there'll be a general information out there. Mm. At the minimum, Google. Mm -hmm. Okay? At the minimum, Google and look at what, the, what, what mm. is the profile of this fellow. Okay? But that's one bit. Mm. The other bit, or two, two bits, other bits, is one the electorate itself must be willing not to be part and parcel of the corruption. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll stop you there. Keep that line of thought. We come back after the break and then you continue with the second part. Viewer, if you're just tuning in, this is National Talk. We have Dr. Patrick Dacum in the house alongside Joyce Jakada. We'll be back in a moment and uh, on the rebound, as usual, the lines will be opened so you can call in and contribute. Uh, our language must be civil and courteous and uh, be as brief as possible so that we can accommodate as many contributors on this platform as possible. Don't go away. It's ECWA TV, Africa's national talk. Hello. You're on to National Talk. Share your views on National Talk, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thursdays and Fridays. Calls only.
join us on the segment of the morning show where we bring you reviews on some men communities um, and considering the fact Even that of, uh, animals to do one thing or the other mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, so far so doesn't speak well of us as a nation traditional medicine for COVID-19. The president has Buhari. Take the protection of the rights of Nigerians. Yeah, welcome back, and if you're just tuning in, it's National Talk from ECWA TV Africa. I have uh, Dr. Patrick Dacum, the Chief Executive Officer of the Institute of Human Virology, Nigeria. You are still uh, well seated in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Thank you very much, Donna. Yes, and, and Valia, uh, I, I'm calling the name <laughs> of my producer, and Joyce Jakara is also still very much around. Mm -hmm. Well, we are still going to continue with our discourse even before we went on break. He was on the first uh, 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 reason, then we are going to the second, and the, then the third. Uh, uh, Joyce asked that question, so I will allow her to, to rephrase the qu question again so that we can continue. Okay, I was um, asking on what Nigerians should look at in electing their leaders because 2023 is just by the corner and even as you answer that i also want you to look at um how would you assess now the efforts of the current administration in tackling uh, or meeting the needs of nigerians well uh thank you very much i was talking about the fact that um Communities and individuals that vote have a responsibility, mm -hmm. okay? It's just, just not just assessing the leader. Mm -hmm. Number two is also not putting on the leaders and on a pressure that makes them corrupt. Mm -hmm. So you see, we have something called, when they catch a thief, mm -hmm. it's our thief. Mm -hmm. So everybody has his own thief. <laughs> we have the NDDC saga, mm -hmm. okay, that made the news and was on social media. And then we had one of the uh, former militants saying that this is a very minor thing. Mm -hmm. Why are you looking at 81 billion when there are several billions in other ministries headed by northerners mm -hmm. that you should be looking at? And so the electorate now is owning the thieves and yes. saying it's our own son. Don't do anything to him. Mm -hmm. I think that's not the approach that should be followed. Because if we want to really deal with the issues related to corruption, apart from the onus on the leaders, is also the onus on, uh, uh, on the electorate, mm. uh, not, 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 not owning the thieves. But secondly, not also making demands that are, you know, very, very, very unreasonable. Mm. The moment now Donald becomes governor of Plato, mm. what's going to happen? Everybody wants you to pay his school fees. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants you to 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 to, to build pay their medical bill. They pay their medical bills. Everybody also wants that their communities should benefit. Mm -hmm. Very genuine. None of these I issues are, are, are not. But a leader will be able to now say, in what other ways can I help? In what other ways can I institutionalize something that will not only help this person but help the generality of the people? Mm -hmm. And if the, the the followers will also understand that development takes a little while then I think that we'll be moving together in the correct direction. So, to come back to your question as to, you know, 2023 is approaching. Mm. And um, at the national level, we've had calls for different, now you hear people talking about competence. Mm. But democracy is said it's a government of the people, mm. by the people, and for the people. And for the people. Mm. It means then that embedded in democracy is some sense of inclusiveness. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. It means then that if there isn't a deliberate effort to protect the rights of minorities, then it is going to be extremely difficult for them to ever get to also participate in governance at that level. Could that be the reason why we, we, we now have this issue of zoning, this zoning, that, and uh, it's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's not helped anybody? 
Of course, that is it. But let me also tell you, Donald, that I believe that inclusiveness should take care of every zone, every, but yes. it should not compromise competence. Mm -hmm. There is no local government in Plato State, for mm -hmm. example, that does not have enough resources, human, mm -hmm. to produce the entire mm -hmm. Yes. You can go to one local government, and if you want the governor, the deputy, the speaker, the members of the, the House of Assembly, mm -hmm. and everybody to come from that local government, you can get it. And there will be people that are competent. But to what extent will it represent the views of others mm. is the issue. That is why you find out that the National uh, Assembly, the State House of Assembly, is a most representation from all over. And that even if the governor comes from this uh, local government and uh, the next round it comes from the same local government, he will have no choice but to ensure that commissioners come from every local government. Mm -hmm. He will have no choice but to ensure ministers come from every local government. So I think that, one, we should get back to what democracy is for in terms of assessing what is going on now. And then, two, we should ensure that, you know, the rights of all those that are marginalized are also encompassed in it. Mm -hmm. We are in a situation where uh, somebody said uh, Nigeria is like a vehicle that is being driven and then at some point you have passed the signboard of uh, Equa TV. Mm -hmm. Then you close your eyes and you have traveled for some time. Then you open your eyes and then you saw the signboard again. Mm -hmm. What has happened? You have reversed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is there are, there are, uh, in some, some area that you can clearly see that, in fact, it was better many years back, nationally. Now, coming back to where we are domiciled mm -hmm. at the state level, I believe that continuity and a follow through of a strategic plan is very key to long term development it is impossible for you to be able to make a big mark within a term so the constitution provided for two but even within two it's not easy it means then that if you come in and abandon everything another person did mm -hmm. and start your own all over again you mm -hmm. create that recipe for confusion and you stunt the growth of the state. So for me, we must have a situation whereby devoid of the party that wins, mm. devoid of the individual and the zone the person comes from, mm. follow the blueprint and ensure that this blueprint, you can now reprioritize according to your own manifesto, mm. but it must follow a plan. Okay. So that if we have set up a computers for revenue generation, don't come and bring your own computers. Okay, uh, Doctor, I, I, I want you to, to, to take a look at the, the, the umpire, the Independent National Electoral Commission. We are in 2020. In a few months, we are going to hit 2021. Everybody all over the place are already talking about, uh, I want to be governor, I want to be a senator. Some are, are already doing permutations for either vice president or Mr. President. Uh, himself. INEC is there. When do you think it is proper for uh, a, a, a revisit, so to speak, to the Electoral Act, which is still pending somewhere, and uh, every election that is supposed to be held in Nigeria must have a document that, that, that guides whatever activities people do. That's one. Secondly, the voters register. Why do we wait in Nigeria until some few months to elections, then the, the Independent National Electoral Commission comes out and tells you that they want to do voter registration? Is it not a recipe for confusion and disenfranchisement of uh, Nigerians who are of age? Well, uh, thank you very much, Donald. I think that that's a very important thing because the role of the umpire is very crucial in the success of whatever is going on. I think the, 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 the National Assembly, I believe, was supposed to have uh, gotten to a point where the Electoral Act was already completed and just ready to be signed uh, at some point. I don't know exactly uh, where that is, but uh, the, 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 the legal people may tell us better. Mm. However, I think that beyond the Act itself mm. is also the attitude of people. I mean, you do an act, 
that provides for people to make say when we used to do option A4. Mm. They start counting. I saw it on TV. Mm. And people have queued up. One, two, two. 15, 30, <laughs> 80, 500, live. Yes. It means that whatever it is we're doing, we must do it in such a way that it must also not be subject to manipulation. That is why I believe that eventually electronic voting is the way. All right, let me take this call. Hello? 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 Well, uh, you, I can hear my voice at the background, so you have to call us and call again. Please reduce the volume of your TV. Hello, good evening. Yeah, hello, good evening. Hello, this is uh, Mr. Ibrahim David calling you from Burning Kevin, Kevin State. Okay, go ahead, uh, Ibrahim David. Yes, all right. Uh, I just want to contribute uh, on the national talk you are discussing. Very interesting. Go, go ahead. But I want us to want to tell ourselves the truth. Okay. You see, not until and unless we are able to go through our books, talking about the religious books this time around, mm -hmm. and uh, abide by the teachings, then we will only be defeating ourselves. Uh, you see, from the Christian perspective, you get to understand what Jesus said, you should do, love your neighbor as yourself, and the rest. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the other side, uh, in fact, I, 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 I was discussing sometimes in the, in the office, and a friend was like, to him, uh, if you stay from the national coffers and be in the place of worship, you uh, will say, forgive me. You tend to want an equal religion with back somebody in the field and you go to him. Of course, that is not the fit to me. He may not be the punish yet uh, uh, by the cost of law, but as far as it's concerned, somebody tells me something that as far as that spirit is concerned, it, 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 it's not a blessing to me. Mm. So there are a lot of things, uh, you know, we, we, we may be seen from the surface, but right in the inside. There are a lot of things that I did not wish we do not know. But I pray uh, if uh, God should visit individuals to see the need, to do the need to, rather than just adhering to so called a uh, teacher, uh, a malam, or a pastor tells you what ordinary you may need to do, you know that this thing ought not to be so, and yet you are doing it because somebody else has asked you to do. So I think that is where the problem lies. Okay. I strongly believe me to do me go through the scripture, especially like from the Christian perspective, Jesus has laid out all those things for us. Okay, we, we okay, David, it, David. I think it will go a long way in that Thank you. All right, thank you very much for calling in. Yes. That's uh, uh, the take of Mr. David from Burning Kebby, or Kebby State. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yes. let me just comment. Uh, well, uh, David, I'm sure he's still watching. Thank you very much. That's a very wonderful contribution. Mm. But you in your own congregation must be uh, ready to take it to the next level. And what is the next level? That is, if there is a counselor, a chairman, or a, ma a and let's not limit it to just political posts, people that occupy positions anywhere, mm. that if they go wrong, we should discipline them in the church also. All right. Hello? 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 Well, he's busy listening to the television and he's forgetting that he has called. Well, we must discipline those who are in public office, not necessarily politicians, because uh, the malfeasance is taking place all over the place. Because he did mention something. Mm -hmm. That is, people get money illegally, come mm -hmm. and build a church or yes. build a worship center, mm -hmm. and it's acceptable. Well, definitely this shouldn't be the case. Mm -hmm. And that if... An investigation is taking place, or so the church may say that, well, we do not have the apparatus to investigate them in their place of work, so we depend on their word of mouth. But where clearly you can see that the, 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 it, it, there is a question mark mm. on an individual, you should be able to now take it a step further, invite that person and begin to question him. Too. If people know that, yes, my pastor is going to question me, uh, they probably will have some sense that indeed God is watching. You know, but if I know that I can do it and then go scot free, mm. now in the office I pay the bribe and nobody is going to hold me accountable, and I come to the church, nobody is saying anything to me. Instead, they are pulling out the front seats and enabling and me to sit, sit down. down. Or when we glorify people, not because we know them in the church, but because they have money, 
So when it comes to luncheon, you see the chief luncher is not even somebody that even takes communion. Mm. You know, he is somebody that uh, d does not care about religion. But when it comes to we are trying to roof our church or build this, and then we remember that he exists. All right, let me take this one. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Good evening. This is National Talk. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. The volume of your TV is interrupting. Reduce it. Hello? Yeah, hello. Talk to me. Uh, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you too. So what's your contribution? Hello? Oh, well, I guess she's not ready to, to talk. Mm -hmm. yes. We also know, Mr. Duna, we're talking about politics now and then looking forward to 2023. I've observed a lot of Nigerians and their attitudes show that like they've lost confidence in the government. Mm. Looking forward to 2023, what do we need to do to change the narrative? Because all these issues of corruption that we're facing and then height of insecurity, increasing rate of insecurity, poverty is what some of the factors that have made a lot of Nigerians lose confidence in the government. All right. Uh, Yes, let, let me add this one to what? Yes, hello? 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 Mm -hmm. The lines are beginning to crash into... Go ahead, doctor. Well, um, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Joyce, for that uh, question. But let me speak especially to my fellow Christians. Our help does not come from any government. Our help does not come from any political party. Our help comes from the Lord God Almighty. Mm. And if we are waiting for the problems and our, to be at peace in our mind mm. because of a government, we will wait forever. Mm. Absolute peace and absolute uh, tranquility comes only when Jesus comes. Mm. Okay? So while on earth here, we will toil and we'll continue to toil. So let's not give up because if we, if we know that there is a God in heaven who can turn things around, then we'll not give up. Right. At the point at which Israelites sinned and suffered, they had to repent and come back. Hello? Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. This is National Talk. Okay, thank you. This is Sunday. I'm going to have a colleague from Delta State, from your town. Sunday from Delta. Go ahead and talk to us. Yes, uh, I'm at the topic of business on board. Go ahead. Yes, I'm, I'm happy with the doctor there and both of you there. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, good. Uh, I want to really appreciate what the doctor has already talked about, most especially your friend that uh, you mentioned about the vampire. Mm -hmm. I want us to be looked into seriously in the nation. And the issue of the fear of God Go ahead, go ahead. Yes. We're we, 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 we talking about three of the two. Yes. We want to talk about, imagine someone having uh, a kind of amount of money in his stock. The money that uh, a community cannot spend for the whole of their life, one person will have it. Mm. We should check things like that in our life. Mm. Yeah, the issue of the literacy of the food. Mm -hmm. uh, we should try our best to see that uh, people are educated and uh, we know all this comes with uh, good governance. All right. Okay, so what I'm really interested on is seeing uh, God caring people. No matter how educated you are, if you are not a God caring leader, there's no way out for that. Okay. Everybody belongs to you. You are the brother to everybody, everybody is your brother. Mm. Uh huh. So by the time we have all these things in place, I think uh, we want a better nation for us to further help it. All right. Thank you so much for calling and sharing your thoughts with us. When Mr. President was being sworn in the first instance in 2015, he made a statement, I am not for anyone, I am for everyone. Do you see that happening these days? Or what went wrong? Well, I, I, I think that... Um, it's difficult to see it apparently mm. because you can uh, clearly see that um, you, 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 you can't point to the fact that this is a wee wee thing. Mm. Okay? You know what I mean by wee wee is that the force with which I will address an issue in
part A and part B mm -hmm. would be the same if it is a wee wee. But if there is a discrepancy in it, and I do not want to be very specific, mm. you know, then you know that indeed there are those that can do whatever they want and go scot free, and there are those that even if it is uh, in Hausa they say tuntu be, eh? mm -hmm. they just hit their leg on the stone, then it becomes a crime. All right, we are going to take this last call, then we can now use the remaining part of the the, the program and it's to to do uh, the need for. Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes, who is on the line, please? This is National Talk. Yes, my name is Yuan Atagani, calling from Tarawa. Yuan Atagani from Tarawa. Go ahead and talk to us. Okay. I want to contribute actually on the issue of politics to 2023. Go ahead. Um, we are talking about 2023 politics and it's fast approaching. Mm -hmm. And I want to, my contribution to my fellow Nigerians is based on the electing right people in the office. Okay. Particularly people who are having the fear of God. And as the election is fast approaching, my fellow Nigerians should be focused, especially Christians. Mm. They should try to look around. And if I'm speaking like this, particularly our leaders, Christian leaders, mm -hmm. it's time for our Christian leaders to cooperate. Go ahead, they, can, listen. they can they can take a block and even up to the town national mm. to look for the right person that's supposed to rule us in Nigeria. The person that is having the fear of God. If the person is there ruling Nigeria, some of the principles that are there in the Bible mm -hmm. can be manifested there while right? the person is ruling. The person ruling is not there to insert Christianity into the country, mm -hmm. but by showing the Christian principles, even the opposite religion there will know that he is not biased, that he is ruling according to the fear of God, because God is a justice God. If a true Christian is there really, even if he's fully Christian, he's embezzling the government money. But the right leader that is there can even punish his fellow Christian that he is embezzling government money. Okay. Uh, 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 my, our friend from, from Taraba. Uh, yes, sir. I, I like the angle that you are looking at. But I, 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 I will, I'll have to break you here so that I will allow our guest to, to talk more and address the issue that you have just raised. Thank, Thank you, you so much for calling in. Thank you. Doctor. So let, let me um, say something related to what uh, the gentleman from Taraba has just stated. Mm. He talked about the principles. Yes. Now, the one key principle that I see that Jesus Christ manifested that led to people getting help one way or the other is compassion. Mm. Why, how, how do you feel when you see somebody ha going, uh, having a problem? How do you feel when you see somebody in need? How do you feel when you see a community in need? I'll give you an example. I came with some friends from the U.S., and we went to Basa. Mm. I thank God that's where you come yes, from. Okay? You, you saw the kind of road that right. enters Basa. Apart from <laughs> that, we also saw women yes. carrying uh, water on their head. And this white friend of mine turned around and said, this must be really crazy, Patrick. What are you going to do about it? These women are carrying this heavy water on their head. I said, yeah, they just went to fetch water. Well, why can't they just turn on the top? I said, tap? There's no tap. <laughs> well, let me fast forward the story. Mm. You can clearly see the compassion that came on, and the compassion impacted on me also. Yes. And I started imagining, what do we do? Eventually, we were able to talk with this gentleman, and they went back uh, to, uh, to the U.S., along with Reverend Itapson, Emmanuel Itapson. Yes. And we were able to raise the sum of about $700,000 and we got borehole making machines. And in Basa alone, I think we sank up to 50 boreholes. 
Yes, I, 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 can, I can testify to that because you drank, you drank some, some of the water. Yes. <laughs> I drank some of the water. However, <laughs> we, we are going to. So, so, so that's compassion. Yes. Okay. If I come and then suddenly I see my sister here, I say, wow, this is my daughter. What? She's looking worried. What? I'm driven by that. And the compassion we're talking about is a compassion that comes from you being a child of God. Mm. You doing it the way Jesus Christ did it. Mm. When he had compassion, he fed them. When he had compassion, he healed them. When he had compassion, he said, sit them down. Mm -hmm. So unless you have that virtue, and that virtue comes from you being a child of God, it is difficult for you to be able to do things that are out of self. So I think that, let me, I see you folding your hands. Looks yes. like we're running out of time. Yes. So we have please, run out of time. Right. So, so please, let's have people that will grow as adults and exhibit the evidence of maturity, love, gentleness, you know, self-control, patience, yes. patience. In increasing quantity, then mm. we know that they are, they are getting, they are, they are moving in maturity as Christians and they'll be able to handle the things adult handle. Wow. It's been, uh, how time flies. We just started and then it's already an hour or so. Uh, Dr. Patrick Dalcombe would like to thank you so much for or coming to share your thoughts with us on National Talk. I, I will definitely uh, ask my producer to, to call you back again so that we can do the B part of what we are starting. We have so much to, 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 to go over, but we've not been able to, due to time uh, frame. Uh, thank you once again for making it to the studios. Thank you so much, Donald, uh, for having me. And Joyce, thank you so very much, too. I think it's a privilege, and I thank you so very much. Thank you so Joyce. Well, beyond personal interest, the fear of God is key. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Get the required knowledge and do the needful. All right. I would like to say uh, thanks to Equa Executive, our General Manager, Tony Nakale, and my producer, Valia Gadu, the crew members, and everyone who has made this possible, and particularly you, who sat down to listen and watch and pick a thing or two. Let's make Nigeria work. But I leave you with this. The good, the right thing that you know you ought to do and you do not do, the Bible calls it a sin. Do that which is right. I'm Donald Weise. See you next time.